Well, I'm standing here with uh, Ron from New Hampshire, uh, and you are the guy who runs uh, ShireSilver.com. Am I saying the URL correctly? Yeah, ShireSilver.com. And uh, Shire Silver, of course, is a, um, a way to trade in silver in very small denominations. And of course, you have a way to trade even in gold in very small denominations. Uh, and you've done something new. Tell me. Well, I, uh, I have even smaller denominations now. Um, these are my the, not only the new designs on these cards, but they are the smaller denominations. The half a gram of silver and a twentieth of a gram of gold. And I believe this is the smallest uh, trade unit gold available anywhere. Uh, and is your reason for this, are you doing this because the prices keep going up? Um, that made it a little more uh, economically feasible to do these smaller units. But also my, uh, my ability to create, to, to basically cut the metal uh, has improved to the point where I can do it accurately enough. Oh, so you're doing your own cutting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I okay. cut and I and I measure nice. these myself. Right. And um, the, are you finding that the other? Oh well. What is that, that? That small denomination of gold. What will that buy right now? In um, terms of its spot price. That comes out to it's about four dollars. Okay. Uh, so we're, we're translating for two thousand thirteen dollars. I should probably say it will buy what uh, two loaves of bread. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. Okay. And the uh, the half gram silver is. Uh, I sell these for about a dollar. Yeah. And the, okay, yes, right. You were selling one gram silver, you know, a year or two ago, and those you were selling those for a dollar back then, but the price has gone up so much. Yep, inflation. Exactly. That's inflation of the Federal Reserve note. Um, these actually stay fairly steady over time. Well, that's what's interesting with with silver and gold, though, is there will be a spike at some point where they will rise faster than the. The, their purchasing power will actually rise for a while, then it will crash back down. But yeah. that, you know, over the long haul, it's very stable. Yeah. Over the and short haul, it looks very volatile. Although compared to, uh, you know, when the worst of the fiat notes, you know, like the Federal Reserve is going to, um, like we saw in Zimbabwe, Argentina, and pretty much every other country that's had financial difficulties, they see a lot more volatility than we've ever seen in gold and silver. Now, I actually measured out um, how much gold was buying in Zimbabwe, um, or what, what you were, but the people were actually, they, they shop by, they go to their river and they dig out some gold if they can, if they can find a gram or two to live on for that week. And uh, what I determined was in $2,009, they were paying about, three, they, were, they were buying bread with $3 worth of gold, basically in Zimbabwe. Which, of course, is a little high. So the way I looked at it was that gold had actually eventually kind of gone down against bread <laughs> in, in Zimbabwe. But um, anyway, um, uh, obviously there's going to be, you know, the, 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 the concern now, I think in some circles, that there's going to be, you know, federal moves against precious metals of some kind. And there are two camps, you know, there's the people that want people to be able to trade in precious metals. They want the currency to be backed by precious metals, maybe. Uh, and the feds who may come and take the precious metals. Um, what's the... Um, yeah, what's like they the... did back in, uh, in, the, in the 30s. Yeah. Um, they made it illegal to own gold, um, gold as a currency. Um, but that's one of, the, one of the things with these is um, these, can, these can be produced easily in small amounts using uh, low capitalization processes, using small manufacturing techniques. Uh, so, so, so the average person can do what you're doing? The average person can do it. Um, and and you've, you've open sourced the methods, right? You put those online or? Yeah, the, uh, uh, well, it, it, it is on the website. There's, there's complete instructions, including where to get the metal, um, what devices to use, how to do it. And uh, so anybody can do it. Uh, it's easily portable, the mints, easy to hide, so if somebody needed to go underground with it, that's easy to do. But I've also been trying to reach out to governments to try to get them to buy into the model as well. Which is not that difficult right now because Utah has already passed legislation to go sort of with gold right. as, a, and, as a currency. And some of the other, some of, so there's been some foreign countries that have been looking into uh, alternative currencies. There was some town in Italy that just recently started up their own currency. Uh, and it's something that, you know, there's hundreds of alternative currencies out there already. 
Uh, but this is the kind of thing that if a government took it over and decided to make their own version of it, I think it would actually do very well. Yeah. And it would help that, that nation's economy. Well, as much as we fight the state government in New Hampshire, the state governments actually are the possibly the way out from the current crisis, you know, with the federal government collapsing, probably there's got to be something's going to fill the void. Uh, and it's a very soothing idea to think that the governments we've already got, you know, soothing for the average person that the governments we've already got are going to step in and fill that void, the state governments, because they're they're not nearly as as, a, as bankrupt as the federal government is. Right. You know? And uh, the one the one problem with the states trying to accept precious metals is that um, the Constitution specifies coin. Uh, these are not coins. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't believe any uh, court would rule them to be coins, which is also one of the advantages that these have. Um, but if a state was to produce its own, then the federal government could come in and say that they were counterfeiting. Mm. Um, if they, if a state was to make, but then the coins. then the ads are taking on a state, which we really kind of need that to happen at some point. The states and the Fed will need to have yeah, some would, kind of hopefully peaceful conflict at some point. It might a result in a scale. constitutional crisis. Right, that's that what we want. I could think. get resolved yeah. in our favor. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Uh, well, anyway, yeah, yeah, as these sides, well, let's let's talk about the state. Well, I, whatever sides you you see forming up, what 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 do they do to come to a peaceable agreement? What's the win-win solution? Oh gosh. Um, well, the win-win is for uh, essentially, I think Ron Paul's plan is a pretty good one to allow competition. You know, even keeping the Federal Reserve alive but audited. And, and perhaps a little more under political control while allowing competition to insert a new uh, wealth-based currencies to come in to replace the debt-based currency that is the, the Federal Reserve note. Um, and over time, as we replace the debt-based currency with a wealth-based currency, we can get back to a much stronger and uh, healthier economy. Uh, the debt-based currency is really one of the root causes of our problems today. So we need a way to transition away from the debt-based currency to a wealth-based currency and precious metal commodity currencies are of course the gold standard of currencies. Uh, so it seems the obvious way to do that. Okay. Oh, also, I gotta ask. This is just this is almost like for me. It's sort of personal, but maybe other people will like this idea. But too. I've been wanting you to mint something that no one else mints. You know, I think I've been kind of like leaning on you to please mint this. You know, but, but I want to see like an Indian bullion. That's my that's my uh, uh, dream because no one else makes one, and no one made palladium bullion until I think what I don't know. Maybe it was I don't know the exact time, but it was fairly recently. Have yeah. you ever have you considered doing that, making a bullion out of some unusual method? Uh, well, I've, I've been concentrating mostly on, you know, trying to get the business up and running. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, because if it doesn't, then it's kind of pointless. Um, I have been researching into doing copper, and it's actually a lot more difficult than, uh, than you would think. Well, it's already been done, too. Yeah, and it has been done. But, but if you look at the periodic table of the elements, it, it's that one column. It goes copper, silver, and gold. And then it's radioactive stuff. And those are the three elements that traditionally have been used for currencies. Well, my understanding is that indium has the right properties. It's, it's worth, like, what, a third as much as gold? It and may it's, be. Uh, last I checked, and it's very, it's very metalable. You can manipulate it. It doesn't melt at 80 degrees or anything crazy. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Platinum and palladium are they're like in the next uh, column over in the periodic mm -hmm. table, which, you know, and of course the columns in the periodic table represent roughly um, the kind of properties of that element. So, you know, if you take that, that column, the, the copper, silver, gold column, the ones on either side of it are certainly potentials for, for making a currency out of it. All right. Well, good. I really appreciate what you've already done, Ron. Thanks. All right. Take care out there. Yeah.